Hello, my peeps. Welcome to So You Bought a Stamp Set, or in this case, Bundle. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about both and what you need to do when you first get these new products. Now, this has killed me to not bust into these. Um, I've had a busy couple of weeks since I got them, <clears throat> and I've had to uh, I've had to keep them in their pristine condition so that I could I could do this video. But normally when I get one, I just I crack into it and I start using and I using it, <laughs> and, um, and and it's hard to not do that. But there are a few things you should really keep in mind and check for when you first get a bundle, um, even if you don't have the chance to use it right away. Um, because then that way, if there's anything wrong, not just because there's a return policy with Stampin' Up! of 90 days, but um, if if what you get is faulty and there's a limited time on when you can replace it, um, a paper pumpkin kit, there's only so many available and after a certain point they release what's left. <clears throat> or maybe there's not any at all. A catalog releases, um, there's usually lots of stock. If it's close to the end of when the catalog releases, when things go on sale and you you know, you buy a lot of stuff on a good deal, well, they're going to run out of stock or they're going to end the catalog. And a lot of the stuff, when they're done with it, they package it up and they donate it. Like, it doesn't just sit on shelves somewhere like it does in our houses. Um, so you want to make sure you do it in a timely manner so that if you do need a replacement, it's actually available. Like, you can still get one. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you the stamp set and then I'm going to show you a different one with the bundle just to show you different stuff. This stamp set is a... Um, red rubber stamp set, a cling stamp set. And they come like this in their nice little case. And they'll come with a separate set of labels and the stamps themselves. Now, I know we've had many uh, iterations of this over the years. When they first came out with the red rubber, they were attached to wooden blocks. Then they came out with um, the clear mount ones, which had a different kind of sticky adhesive to them. And they were meant to go on, you guessed it, clear blocks, hence clear mount. Um, and I know I have some of my older stamp sets that I still keep that I stopped putting the stickers on because the stickers would lose like their their adherability. Um, and they, they, were, they wouldn't stay on very well. And so they stayed on better if you just stuck them on with this stuff. Um, then they, uh, sometimes I would also just put glue, like the, the two-way glue on the back that would dry quickly and just stay a little bit tacky. But then that made the blocks really dirty. They have since come up with the cling film, and this is a few years old now. And it's a different kind of sticky that goes on the back of the clear mount blocks. So if you did not in the past put your labels on for all the different reasons, um, you want to do it with this one. Now, um, one of the first things you want to do when you get a red rubber stamp set, though, is look at the stamps and see where they're pushed out. And if you need to, if it makes it easier, pop them out. Um, I will say, because I'm going to turf mine in the garbage, but... Um, I know some people who keep these, they peel off the back, stick it inside their stamp set so that when, and then the, the stamps just pop out so that this way they, um, they know if a stamp is missing. Some of them just keep it in here and just keep it loose and just kind of put them back in again like this. And then that way, if you pop out a stamp and it's not as big a deal on obviously something that big, but if you pop this little thanks, I think it says thanks. Yep. Thanks out like this and you're going to put your stamp set away later and and you didn't have anything around it are you going to notice this tiny little stamp is missing well you sure do on here like when you keep it like this so that is not how i do it but i do know some people who do um and i like to rearrange mine and i put them in a certain order so i like mine my way but yes let's i will pop mine all out eventually so one of the things you want to do though is you want to check and make sure that the stamped edge so this raised little edge here is not too close to the edge here or worst case scenario cut off so these are all printed out and then a, a machine they run through a machine and they get like die cut <laughs> they get cut as they go through the machine so if anything happens if this thing you know glitches on the conveyor belt or something goes or whatever it gets a little get something bug bangs it or whatever hits a bump in the road and it gets nicked a little sideways it could easily cut this off well that's going to affect your stamping image so you just kind of want to look, ideally, you want them very like centered with like an equal amount around. 
that that's less about quality and more about just being able to tell where the stamp is because when you're looking at it you're looking at it this way right and you do have a sticker on so you know which way is up and stuff that looks like a car right now um but if, if your stamp set is like really low to one edge then you have to remember that when well most time you can look first that's what i suggest but but you don't want to be too too close to an edge on a very small stamp like a, with a narrow sentiment or something like that or even like really fine art if you are too close to the edge you just risk that you're going to be constantly smudging that line um mine are all good i can't show you a bad example right now um i have had stamp sets in the past where they were really close to the edge so i, I would get them and i would try them if if it affects the stamping and if you try it a few times and every single time you cannot get a good image then let stampin up know and they'll replace it right um, but that's one of the first things you want to do is just kind of check to make sure that that uh, they're not too close to the edge or cut off. Um, and then you want to put labels on them. And like I said, in the past, I, I would skip the label step, but we're, we're definitely doing the label step now because the new cling film is awesome. You can also buy, it's over, it's too far for me to reach for my desk, but you can buy um, sheets of cling. And they come in little strips. I can't think of how wide they are. It's, it, the, the paper, the, actually the page is about this big. But it comes, it's cut into like strips. So you can take them and stick them on the back of other stamps and turn them into the cling stamp. Uh, one thing before we put the labels on that I'm going to point out though. When you have stamps that have like big um, void spots in the middle. It's really easy when you're inking up to hit too much in the middle and get little bits of ink in the middle. And then when you go to stamp, if you push too hard or if that just happens to be a, a softer spot or something on the on what you're doing and you push down, then you get this, you, it spoils it with ink, right? So I love it when Stampin' Up <laughs> cuts out the middle of the bigger stamps because now the ink is only going to stick, look, I got away from me, the ink is only going to stick to the raised edges and you're not going to collect ink here, which you have the potential of ruining your card with. Now, a lot of people will save these. Um, in this case, oh, I can see one thing that this would work for. Um, I don't know that the stickers, I can't, oh, look, there's stickers. Um, if you look at them, they're in a bunch of these, all these big animals have them. Um, you can, that you can still stamp with them. It's, it's like stamping on a block. You make big splotches and stuff. But, <laughs> so sometimes they look like things and sometimes they're worth keeping and sometimes they're not. This looks like a pork chop. Um, some of the, or, or no, actually it looks like a big, huge comma. Um, anyways, I don't, keep, I'm not going to save those, but this is what we're doing. I'm going to use this one though, cause it's a solid, cause it's tiny. They, like, they don't cut out little pieces here. They're just cutting out the big, the big pieces. Uh, I'm going to show you two things. So this is how we learned to put on, um, the labels on stamps. I'm doing cutesy little mouse, which is this guy. So. This is how I learned to do it. And I'm going to show you something I just learned from my good friend Tamara. Um, and I know she saw it on, I was trying to find the video again. I think she said it was Jackie Bolche, who's a, um, a Bolche, okay. I, I think there's an American demonstrator in this, and she has a, the Stampin' Clompers, I think, Clompin' Stampin' or something like that is her name. Um, I think that's where she originally saw it. I can't 100% remember. But I'm going to show you two different methods because this one might work better for some. The other one, when I saw it, I was like, sweet. And I'm going to use it on the bigger one because um, I hate when my labels are crooked. And I find that it's easier to get them straight on the small ones than the big ones. Okay, so I've peeled off the two little pieces, which I already threw in the garbage, to expose my little mouse hug in the heart. Then I'm going to peel this little piece off the back of this stamp. And what I'm going to do... And I, I'm going to do this where I can actually see. Because here's what you need to know. If you miss this and you're wrong, that's it. This is a one-shot deal. This stuff is sticky enough so that the side that is currently still stuck to the paper um, has a special adhesive on it that lets it cling to the block but not permanently adhere. This side is a permanent adhesive to stick it to the back of your stamp. If you try to pull this off once you get it on, you're going to end up ripping the foam which will eventually affect the quality of the stamp. If the foam starts to break down, you won't have nice solid pieces, so don't do that. It is what it is. However you get it on, that's how you get it on. So I'm gonna actually look, because I only got one shot at this. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up the feet first, because there's two very distinctive notches. And then I'm gonna go 
And I'm going to line up the head and the ears. And then I got the tail. So I've got it enough in this little outline as much as I can. Now I'm going to push it down to pick it up. And then you can just peel your stamp off. I did remarkably well. I rarely do that well at getting the stamp on. Um, so usually, isn't, look how cute this thing is. Usually I'm off a little bit or it's like slightly cockeyed and there'll be a piece sticking off. Now this, see this part here is, is not like super sticky. It's sticky to stick to the block. Sometimes I've had to trim because I'll be like way cockeyed, right? This one actually turned out pretty well. Then once, I'm not actually going to keep these little pieces. Um, I always have the best intentions, but as I get older and smarter, I realize that um, it's not going to happen. Like I, things are busy enough unless I instantly see something and have a use for it I know it's not going to happen and I'm better off to just keep things clear so the stuff I want to use is easier to get to <laughs> um there we go so I like to uh, however that thing came in the stamp set doesn't matter to me I like to make things my way so I'm going to do these big guys up here with the little hearts and I'm going to put that guy there See, this is what I like to do before I even stick the first one down. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to, and this is, sometimes this is a Tetris thing. Sometimes you will get stamps that are on like two sheets that really, in theory, should be in like an extra wide or double block or, you know, big, huge stamp sets. Well, I'm a Tetris master and, and it is my, I will, in all and any case, <laughs> fit. <laughs> everything that needs to go into a case into a case it's just a matter of playing with it like what i did it the first time i didn't have room for my mouse the, the way i had it the other way but if i just do a little bit of adjusting i got lots of room for my mouse now so once i do this see, i'm even going to do this i like to have lots of room to pick them up and to grab the things that are around them and there we go now these clings are very clingy <laughs> So when I put them in my case, I just put them in. I don't like hammer, it's the same as when I put them on a block. I don't put them on a block and, I'm sorry, as I drop the block, and squish as hard as I can. Because then when I go to peel it, it's hard to get them off. They don't need to. You just put them on and the first time you stamp it will adhere enough. The first time you like tap in the ink pad. So you don't need to beat on these things because it just makes it harder to get them off. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the second method that I just recently learned with these adorable hugging walruses. So I'm going to peel off the same labels and, and this is, this is um, if you were wondering, those little throwaway pieces, the little insides, there is actual um, labels that go with them because they're, they are cut out. So you could put cling on the back of those little blocks and turn them into things. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to roll and peel this all at the same time. So I get the little pieces out and I did. So yeah, these are sticky. This is what goes to the block. That's sticky. <laughs> I don't want everything stuck to everything. Okay. Now this is what you have to remember. If I was going to put this on, oh, I'm going to peel it back off of here too because it doesn't matter at this point. Just once you've peeled it off, this is like, it's not sticky, but it's clingy. It, it, it's it's staticky enough that if you drop this in dust or little bits of paper, you'll probably end up with chunks on it. And then when you go to push, you won't have an even push. So don't, so keep it, keep it clean and dry once you peel that paper off. So I'm going to peel this paper off and I'm going to stick it like this, right? Straight onto this stamp. So keep that in mind because I'm going to turn this over. Uh, actually, the contrast on my desk is, is good. So I'm going to turn this over to put the sticker on it. So just keep in mind that if I've turned this over, that I have to turn this over, right? So I want this side of the sticker stuck to my block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully roll my piece of paper just enough to get a teeny little bit of the corner. I'm gonna peel this label up and I've already pre-picked a block that's big enough and it does not matter if this is crooked or straight, what matters is that you touch it as little as possible and get the entire sticker on the block. So I've now got my sticker on the block. Now this is, this is, um, I was going to say it's upside down, but upside down is not the right word. This is how this sticker is, right? <laughs> I've got the sticker like this. So I picked it straight up so that the upside that goes on here is still up <laughs> and just laid it down on the block. 
So now I'm going to turn this my block over, and again my head might get in the way here, but and I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to line up the edge of my sticker on the edge of my stamp set and make sure everything is good. And then I'm just going to put my block down. And I'm going to pick my stamp up. <laughs> and there you go. Now, that's genius. Whoever whoever rationed that out, that's genius. Um, and I rushed a little bit because I was all excited about showing you the result. And you'll see, maybe, that I'm just a little bit off on this edge. Right? So I can. I have adhesive scissors because this thing is sticky. I can take like this. And I mean, neither one of them is foolproof. They're all as good as your eyes and your steadiness. But you want to put labels on the back because it is much easier to see what you're doing. And um, there's just a couple different methods and one of them is going to work better for you. Maybe there's a third method. If somebody's got a third method, by all means, show me. Okay, so now we have the slightly clingy part here. We have the permanent part here and we have it mounted. So now when we go to put it on our block, and again, like I said, I just put it on like this. Tap, tap, tap in the ink, push it down and back up without ever cramming it onto this block. They do tend to stick quite well to the block. And what I found, and I try to remember to tell people at class, it's the same if you push too hard into your, <clears throat> into your stamp case, is I always go lower right. I don't know why, it's whatever works for you, but for me, lower right is always the corner that I've loosened. So I always pick the same one. I've never found that it affects my stamping, because what I'm doing is, if I'm roughing up a corner, it's, it's where it sticks to the block, not the part with the rubber. But I don't ever want to mangle it too much that I'm going to affect the quality. But sometimes if this gets pushed down too hard and it gets like really stuck to the block, you can use your nail, you can use your little pokey tool, and just to kind of pry up one corner, I always make it the same corner. Because that way if it's, if somebody's looking, then you tell them lower, or yeah, lower right is always the easiest corner to lift off the block. Right? And then you can lift it up. And again, when I put it back in my block, or in my case, I just put it down like this, and I make one little, and anyway, where I do poke it is in the middle, not along the edges, because I want the edges to come up easy, right? So I poke in the middle, same as when I put it on my block, I poke in the middle, okay? And then it's easier to pick back up again to use the next time I want to use it. So now I'm going to do that, I'm not going to do that right now, um, but I'm going to do that with all of my stamps. Sorry, that was off screen. I'm going to do that with all of my stamps in the stamp set. And this is how I like to do it, right? I like to have all my sentiments together. And I like to have um, my images all together. Now, this is not 100% going to work. But <laughs> because when I flip this over, you're going to see why. But when you do this, so you get to see this image. You also, when you flip it over, it's not because mine's not finished. But you can also, if you grab it this way, you'll also be able to see the exact like image on the stamp. Or what all the sentiments say. But anyways, that's what you want to do. You want to take those and you want to um, do that. So biggest thing on red rubber, like I said, check the edges, make sure it's good. Now, the other kind of stamp sets that we have are the photopolymer. And this one, it's funny. Uh, you know how, you know, if, if you're in a niche group of somebody, um, you get excited about certain things or you get, or things are controversy whoo, about certain things. This is the photopolymer. And in recent years, Stampin' Up! has now, with the photopolymer they used to print on the, on the, there's two pieces of plastic here. There's a really thin film and there's a thicker like window sheet type. Well, on the thicker piece, they used to pre-print, um, like they would print all of this on this piece of plastic. So if you wanted to know what the stamp sets look like, you could look at this plastic piece. So if you put them in a case, like I used to take this plastic piece out and stick them in the back of the case, so that I, one, I could track and make sure I had all my stamps, but also so I could see what the stamps look like. Because sometimes you could look at this and you can go, uh, what is what? What does that one say? Um, but if you look at the black printing, it was much easier. So here's the thing. When I get a new photopolymer stamp set, I take off the little thin filmy piece and I put it in the garbage. <laughs> I know, that's not even the, the, the more controversial part, is I don't keep this thick piece either. Now you could use this thick piece to make window sheet cards, to use for placement figuring. There's lots of things you can do with it. I don't. <laughs> so, and some people will get their photopolymer stamp sets 
um, and keep them on the sheet with the cover over top of it in the case. Okay, that's an option too. That's not what I do. Um, I was doing this as I was talking and I don't know if you noticed. The one thing you want to keep in mind with photopolymer, <coughs> excuse me, is some stamps are pretty easy, right? This one says newsflash. Newsflash, that's upside down. Um, and so that's what I do. I take mine off and I stick them in. Some are, are easy. Some are really stuck to the sheet. Um, I have never like distorted a stamp, but that's always my fear is that I'm going to stretch out a stamp and it's not going to lay properly. And I'm going to show you a trick with um, the dies in a minute in, in that regard. But what you want to do is you want to kind of like bend the paper and grab, it, grab an edge of the stamp and kind of peel it off in pieces if it's like super stuck down. If it's a really big stamp or a really thin stamp, don't just grab and pull. Like what I was doing was this, right? I was going around the stamp and I was picking it off the paper. Because I think if you just grabbed one corner <laughs> and pulled, um, you'd have, you'd have, you know, the chance of distorting it. Now, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe it doesn't even change it enough to matter. But it might, and it also might change it so it doesn't fit the die very well if it's a die stamp. Uh, these are the little, like, rabbit ear antenna. And I just instantly see an alien as soon as I see those. So these ones are much easier if you wanted to mount your whole stamp set. These ones are much easier to do because you can very quickly... Um, I think I get, Do I have that upside down? No. Oh, no, I just can't see what I'm doing. Um, my hand's in the way. You could very easily peel these off, put them in the case, and be done with it. So that's how I do mine, right? I pop them off, I'm done. I'll do the rest of those later. Um, I am going to show you one thing I do that is not a everybody has to do it thing. Here, I'm going to do this really quickly because now it's bothering me that those ones aren't in there. Um, so like I said, I'm peeling them off kind of slow. This happy birthday that's in here um, is awesome. I'm trying to get better at not ordering everything I see and everything I want because there's just simply not enough time to use it all. But so I usually pick the stuff that I'm using in a class or that I have a specific project for or so this one I did see one specific thing that I could use. And, and I'll show you next week after I make them. Um, I got this more so just because I loved it. The nostalgia, the, I don't know, I just loved it. So <laughs> that's why I got this stamp set. I absolutely loved it. Okay, so I bought a bundle. What does a bundle mean? It means a stamp set that comes with dies or a stamp set that comes with a punch. Um, I have no idea what the price of these things are, so I'm going to do it so it's easy math. Let's say the stamp set costs $30 and the die set costs $40. So together that's $70, right? So you can buy the stamp set and you can buy the die and you can pay $70 plus shipping and tax. Or you can buy a bundle. So this 30 and 40 is 70. So 10% of that is seven. So you could buy it as a bundle for $63 plus shipping and tax because I took the 10% off. Now when, when new stamp sets come out, the first time they come in a catalog, they're generally bundled, right? Stamp and die, stamp and punch. If they carry over to a second catalog or if they go from in a catalog to the online store, they generally retire the bundle pricing. So lots of times when you see the last chance list and you'll see that the bundle is retiring, but the stamp set and the dies aren't, they're basically just bundling the 10%. Now, as I make this video, there's actually another sale on that gives you 10% off, an extra 10% off a bundle. So right now you'd actually get 10 more percent off this bundle during the sale. So it doesn't negate the first one. So what did I just say? 63. So you'd get another 630 off. Oh, what did I see? That's where I had to pick the unusual number. So is that, what did I say? 6, 63. So that is 4670. No, 5670, I want to say. Anyhow, that's how the bundling works. It just means you're buying them together. They go together. You buy them together, you get a bundle price. Um, I almost always buy the bundle. Sometimes I might just buy dies, but I will um, rarely just buy a stamp set that has dies that go with it. I love me my die cuts. Now, lots of times with bundles, um, so in this case, like there's there's the lightning bolts, the stars, the antenna, and the TV. And you'll notice that in the die set, though, there's more, right? So there, here's the TV, like the outline of the TV. This one does the inside of the TV. This is the antenna. This is the stamped images of the lightning bolts and the stamped images of the stars. 
but then there's a standalone star oops star standalone antenna standalone graphic i can't think what this starburst uh, it's a to me i see this i see the 70s um and then this one is the like the instrument the, the dials and stuff for the tv so usually when they when they pair them there's extra stand oh and this is the like the color thing that used to be at the end of the night the color thing that goes on there which i think is also will just make cool cards so there's extra things that go on here versus just in the button now i will tell you that i buy these sheets of of magnet and actually because i still have some left in the original packaging i can show you that so this is magical i i'm like not a spokesman or get an endorsement or anything like that um, i looked on amazon there's lots of different ones you can get there's lots of different sizes you can get do what works for you i did try little thin strips at first and i would put like a couple strips across but definitely will use less magnet but definitely look works better with a full sheet than that ever did so these are eight by ten i cut it a one inch stripe off stripe one inch strip off and then i cut them in half this way making two five by seven sheets that's what i do with mine the five by seven sheets I keep in here. So when I get a new one, I can just grab one of these little things that I've pre-cut. Five by seven is the perfect size to go inside a stamp case. These ones are adhesive. The thing I noticed with the little strips, yes, they're adhesive, but I found that the, the pull of the dies, or I don't know what it was, um, would pull them off all the time. And then I would put extra tear and tape on and that would eventually pull off. I noticed with this one, this is not super adhesive because I can pull this thing off if I wanted to. It's not super adhesive, but it, it's enough that they stay on. So I just take one of these and I stick it right to the inside of the case. So generally when I sell them, I just leave them like this and just get a new case for the next one and buy more magnets. Um, I do keep the folder. I have a little box where I keep all these folders so that if I was for some reason um, selling just part of it, I could just take out the part that I needed. But also when I sell these, like I will take this and I'll just stick it with the case so you get the case. So that if, because other, I do know people that keep them separate. They keep them like this. They put a little label on the top that says what this is, put them in a little box so you can like flip through them. Um, I know people keep their dies in binders. I know people keep dies on magnet boards especially the more common like shapes and stuff they'll do that this when you get your dies they're stuck to a piece of card stock or well just cardboard i guess and then there's also this so really the only thing i i well i look at my dies um I, i've never had one but i guess there's the the same thing just kind of give them a quick once over and make sure that all the edges are like intact that nothing's been venture chip if you accidentally overlap your dies you'll notice that you can cut into the die and you can take a chunk out or or bend it or stuff so i mean it's not these are not indestructible but i find they rarely are a problem the one thing i do always check though because they're just little pieces stuck to this little bit of cardboard is when you look at your sheet and it, i should have showed you that for the stamps as well um it said down here quantity 10 right i don't know if i can make that focus it's pretty small and it's fairly pale there we go quantity 10 so one of the things I do is I take this little tune-in sheet I flip my case over and I sort of hyperextend it you know make it go backwards so that I can fit this in and I take the little piece with the die this is just telling me how to put stickers on something well I already put stickers on and I know how so I don't need to see that piece and I take my little sheet for my dies and I stick it on this half so I now have the sheet for the stamps and the sheet for the dies because I have no way of knowing. Um, I have seen other people who will put a sheet in so that they know what goes with their dies. Or, um, and I don't know if you could do it on magnet. I haven't figured out what you could trace with yet. But I know um, the two gents from in, from Britain. He takes his card, just to give you other ideas. He takes his card when he first gets it. And he traces all his dies. So he keeps them on the card. Oops. <laughs> probably does this better than I do um, and sometimes getting them back in the same place is, is tricky so this would oops I'm only going to do a little bit and I'm going really fast so every time I round one side I tend to screw it up the other side seem to be good um, so anyways this is what he does and I can tell you as soon as I saw this I instantly thought of my dad 
Um, cause when we were kids, he had this massive tool chest that he built in the garage that would like open up on, it had wheels and it would open up and he had all of the wrenches and all of the saws and all of the pliers and everything all had a special place in there and a hook. And he had traced around every one of them in like black marker. So if you took one out, you could instantly look and see that it was missing or where to put it back. Anyways, so that's one way to know. And you'll see in a second what happens. I haven't figured out how to do that here, but because when they're all stuck on a magnet, if I've done a class or I've done a big project that I have like the crafter map everywhere, I will flip to the back and I will look and I'll say 10 and I will make sure that I count that I have 10 before I move on. So here's what you want to know. There's two strips of adhesive going down the middle. Bend the cardboard, not the die. Um, I find they pop off fairly easy every now and again. Like this one's going to be harder to get off because there's so much of it stuck to the adhesive. This one, there's like hardly any. And then again, I like to arrange my stuff. Sometimes I arrange them so they match the, the stamp set. But in this case, the TV is upside down. So I don't know why, but no, I'm not doing that. Um, I try to lay them out flat. But in this case, this makes sense to put that one in there. So this is, yeah, this is how the dies are working. If you were matching, this is a standalone die, but if you see on the stamped image, you can see that there is one there. And that was the, the turn it on and off in volume and the channel, and this is the little speaker piece. Now, the reason I try not to like double up on my dies is because I find if I've taken one out, I knock the other one and I knock this one in. I, I prefer just to have them all flat. So if there's enough room, like depending how many dies came in the stamp case, um, then I like to put them out separate. If not, then I start to double them up. So I've got one, two, three, four. And I, I do, as I put them out, I do kind of group them, the things that go together. Okay, see, and this is what I do. And I do this every time, just legit on my own too, because I lose track so much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make sure I have all the dies. And in this case, I got lots of room on this piece, so I'm just going to leave them like that. Now you see what happens though when I trace them first. So now if I if I was at a class or doing this and I had everything in here but I could see I gotta stick something back on here. <laughs> I was I had no intention of putting them back on, so I never really paid attention as I to the adhesive, but here, let's do this. So if I if I was doing this The trick is, as I try to push down one, I pop the other. This is why I don't do this way, I can tell you. So anyways, let's say this is it. So I'm looking at my class, and I look, and I see this, because I bent my cardboard, so nothing's flat anymore, and it won't stick. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm missing one. See, because there's an empty outline. So if you're prone to losing your dies, or if you do keep them on the cardboard, that's a good idea, because it will, it will help you keep them in track. I, on the other hand, do not. I put this in the recycle. <laughs> so there we go. Now, one last trick I'm going to show you. It's not so much a trick as a technique to get a better stamped image. So we're going to use the TV. Um, I don't know if I can here. Well, let's just see. Let's just see. Sometimes, when I, whenever I try to show you, don't do this because it never works out right. It always works out right. <laughs> But I'm just going to do this. So I'm just going to, and I, I literally am just picking it up and laying it down. I am doing nothing else. I am going to, however, get an actual piece of cardstock to stamp on. <laughs> because um, it's going to be too hard to see otherwise. Okay. So this is another one. Remember how I said with the, with the animals? This is another one where this is cut out because generally this would be wood or wood paneling on the TV. And this would be like a more of a gray screen. So it would be two different colors. But having this cleared off, actually that reminds me of something else I wanted to tell you, so I'm going to do that first. Or having this cut out means you're not going to get ink in here that you're going to put onto your cart. Here's something else you want to do. When you first get your stamps, before you stamp on a piece of cardstock, which I just about made that mistake, but instinct or muscle memory or something kicked in. Especially with photopolymer. You're going to want to do this with red rubber, but you're especially going to want to do it with photopolymer. Ink up your stamp and stamp on your scrap paper. See, now this turned out pretty good, actually. These are fine lines. The thicker the lines, the less likely this is that it's going to work out as nicely the first time. But there are a few little gaps and stuff in here. And it's something in the manufacturing process or some kind of little coating on these stamps that makes it so the ink may not 100% keep. 
Some people will use an eraser and run an eraser over it. Um, I've heard of people using a, like a fine sanding block. I don't like the idea of sanding off the this, this stamps because I think you will sand off some of like, especially in this case, these are fine lines, right? And if you don't do it evenly, then you're going to have an uneven stamp. There are, there are stamps that are purposely meant to look like broken lines and a little uneven. Um, let's see if I can grab it fast enough. Where is it? Um, cause I still have this set. So this is one of them, Rockstar. This one just retired, but I like it. I kept it, but you see on here, like these images are meant to be a little more choppy. So when you stamp them, it is not going to be solid. It is meant to be like that. But most of the time that is not how you want your, your stamping to look. So this is what I find works. I stamp it the first couple times. I do it a couple times and see it's getting slightly better, but if it's not, I just take my stamp. Put a little bit of pressure, not a ton, and I just squish it around. Because all you're trying to do is rub the coating off of the photopolymer. Whatever it is that gets stuck on there. Um, and, you, and usually once you've done it, after you've used it, <clears throat> excuse me, the first time, usually it's totally fine. Um, so yeah, so what I had was gaps along the top line. I now have a perfectly solid top line. Oh my God, I love this stamp. I got to tell you, <laughs> the first time I stamped with it, look, no. I love it. Anyway. Um, okay, so that was one of the things. Okay, so now, <laughs> the other thing I was going to show you. So we're going to ink this up, and I'm going to stamp again down here. Now, oops, just get my clothes. close up my ink so I don't end up sticking something in. I'm going to move this out of the way for now. Okay, so <clears throat> what I did was I picked up my stamp and I stuck it on my block and I stamped. Now, this is like 50-50 whether this is going to give what I want it to give, but now I take my die and I go to cut it out. Now this one is fairly square, so it looks pretty good. So when I go to cut this out, th this image is pretty is pretty accurate. Um, with sentiments and with, with the, the, I notice the narrower it is, the, the bigger, like the more often you are to, to notice this. Um, it would probably be the same with, so this, see how many narrow pieces there are? Well, it's kind of hard to see, but there's little narrow pieces joining all these lightning bolts. So this is another one of those ones where, maybe we'll try it instead. Um, so I've just pulled it off the stamp set and I'm putting it on my block. Okay. And now I'm going to stamp it. See, this is, this is a solid one. So yeah, see, <clears throat> this one's easier to see. There's little holes, right? It didn't stamp very solid because it's the first time it's been stamped. But I bet you when I give it a little squish and then... Now I have all solid images. Oh, you can't see those, can you? Ta-da! Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to stamp this one now. Right there. And I felt it like woo, wiggle a little bit because this is such a like spread out stamp. Um, I felt it wiggle a little bit when I put it down there. Okay, so now I'm going to take this die and I am going to put it over top. Oh, there we go. See, now I got what I was looking for. So this die is, is pretty big and solid. Not to say it couldn't happen, but that one's pretty big and solid. So I, <clears throat> I didn't get what I was what I was expecting from. But this one I did. When I line this die up, or try to, do you notice how I can't I can't quite I got those two, but this one's a little bit off. So I've obviously stretched the stamp, putting it on the block somewhere. Because in order to perfectly line up two of them, my other one is not lined up, right? And, and I mean, I, I didn't intentionally do that. I just, but this is, like I said, it's, it's such a flimsy thing. It's got little joining pieces and it would be very easy to stretch it out. So here's what you want to do. Here's your trick for if you have one. And, and maybe you've stamped it and you look and you go to die cut it and it just doesn't line up. It's crooked, the flower, there's something. You just like, what is going on here? 